All right, let's go ahead and get started on our next portion of this lecture. This is about functional behavioral assessments. This is a huge piece of education and the principles in this little section here are going to be seen again in the behavioral management section. And this will change your life as a teacher because if you can learn to manage behavior well, you will last a long time in education. Teacher burnout typically occurs within five years and most of the time that's due to an inability to maintain behavior in a classroom. And you might think, oh, that can't be too hard. It's tough, it is really, really tough. And depending on what school you end up teaching at, will make a difference as well. Um, I taught, in, as I've said many times, in alternative high school. And of course, you know, we're at that far spectrum of a lot of behavioral incidences, a lot of behavior problems, academic issues. I ab absolutely loved it. It was so much fun, but it can be challenging. And even if you end up teaching in a private school or somewhere with high socioeconomic status, it's, you will still see problem behaviors. I've still seen a student, an elementary or middle school student, bite a teacher, even at a school that was really well to do. So these are principles that you just need to know for the, the well being of your future. So let's start with this. First of all, why an FBA and really what is an FBA? And I didn't say FBI. We're not in the FBI, but close because the whole premise of an FBA is to investigate, really, to determine, to figure out why the student is engaging in problem behavior. So you are technically becoming a detective in a sense. So if you think of FBI and FBA, that might help you just a little context clue. You're figuring something out. You want to know why this problem behavior is even happening. And to do that, you have to find the function which is actually part of the name, functional behavioral assessment. Think of functional. You need to find the function. What does function mean? It goes back to the question of why is the student engaging in this? What is the function? So we're gonna talk about exactly why students engage in problem behavior in just a second, but just to give you some context, I'm gonna bring the same chart up at the end because it'll make more sense to you at the end than it does now. But this is what it looks like. Basically, you have to learn how to define the behavior, figure out what's happening before the behavior occurs, and figure out what happens after the behavior occurs. Then if you start to see patterns in this before the behavior, during the behavior, and after the behavior, and you see, oh my gosh, actually, every time that student is in math class, they flip a desk and then scream at their teacher because they want to leave and be put out of the class. Hmm, why could that be happening every day in math class? So a lot of times as teachers, we see it happening, but we don't often stop to figure out why. And this will change your teaching life, I promise you. So then you have to determine the perceived function, which is, I'm going to show you that in just a second, actually, right now. So. In behavior analysis, you will find that there are three functions of behavior and technically you could argue that there are four and I'll talk about the fourth in a second. The functions of behavior, you can boil everything down to these three. Even in your own life, you could start to notice the behaviors that you engage in, behaviors that students engage in, and that in, as well goes with problem behaviors. Here are the three reasons. A student or a human in general really either wants attention, they want to escape something that they don't like, or they want to gain access to a tangible or some experience or item. The only other factor to think about, there are times where it's a sensory issue. It's very rare, but it does happen where a student who maybe is soothing themselves maybe a student has a significant disability and maybe um, I've seen students who will rock back and forth, who will have a repetitive motion that they do because it's soothing. That is something that's more sensory related, but overall, these are the three that you're going to see. So really just focus on these for right now. So what could this look like? You remember that example I just gave you, the student every day in math class. 
he, I had a student who actually did this, this is actually a real life example, flipped the desk. I was, a, I was co-teaching in that situation, middle of math class, right when the assignments were about to, to come out and it's time for work, he would say something rude to the student next to him or say, said the teacher made him mad. Something happened often at that time when math assignments were coming out. So as a teacher thinking, this student is just causing trouble in my classroom. Like I said, if you look only at the top of the iceberg, you're gonna miss the main point. I said that in the last lecture. It's, it's true because if I were to do that functional behavioral assessment, I could see, okay, what happens before he flips the desk, which the flipping of the desk is the behavior. Before the, the teacher says, all right, it's time to get our math assignments out. The student then calls a, another student a name, pretty much picks a fight. They get heated would be what happens after the behavior. Then after the students get heated, the, the student says, fine, flips the desk. And then the consequence to that behavior is runs out of the room. So if you start to log that, like that chart had you could put different days, different times. If I look at five, maybe five to 10 days of math class and observe his behavior, what happens before he flips the desk, what happens when he flips the desk, what happens after, I can start to see every time it's right before, actually flips the desk right after the teacher says, oh, here's your assignment. Which one of these three do you think are the function for that, is the function for this one? It's actually escape. So every time the student flips the desk, it's not a cry for attention saying, look at me. No, in this situation, that student is escaping that math assignment because that student feels, I've had that, that exact student told me he feels stupid in math class and doesn't want his peers to know. So it's better for him to flip that desk and get out of there than deal with that assignment. So as a teacher, you can start to realize Oh my goodness. Okay. I see what the real cause of this. He's trying to escape my classroom. And the, the teacher before realizing this, let the student leave. Actually, this, the teacher would say, get out of my classroom, stop flipping the desk and just get out of here. I got to teach my other students. That student was getting exactly what he wanted. He wanted to leave and his plan is working perfectly. So if you know that the reason he's flipping the desk is to escape, you put a plan in place so that he can't leave your room. And then you'll start to see he's not flipping the desk anymore because that's not working. <laughs> and not only, let's say the student flips the desk and you realize this, what you could do is put a plan in place where you offer maybe tutoring sessions or help that student get really prepared in math class so that he doesn't feel stupid to the point where he needs to flip the desk. Either that or, uh, you can put some kind of a time limit. Say, if you work on this assignment for five minutes, then you can, you can get up and do something else and then increase the time he's working on that assignment. So maybe he starts working. If you've worked five minutes, you get such and such. Maybe you get to walk around the room once. Then you go to, if you work 10 minutes, you can walk around the room once and then get it to the point where they're working the whole time. Either that or you can reduce the amount of math problems that that student is working on. So let's say you gave the student 20 math problems and that's why they're flipping the desk. So like, I can never do this and I don't want my peers to know that I feel stupid. So maybe you could give that student a reduced assignment. Let's say they can do five problems. The next day, maybe they do six and you increase it back into the point where they're doing a full assignment. But if we just keep sending them out of our classroom, it defeats the point. So I hope that explains the purpose of a function. Attention, I'm not gonna go into a, a total depth on each one, I just wanted you to get that picture. Attention could look like maybe the student is Miss, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, Miss Jones, or uh, they, they could also cause a fight in the classroom, but maybe it's because they want the teacher to acknowledge them and talk to them. We see this a lot. Teachers will uh, get to the point where they're just reprimanding all the time. You know you weren't supposed to do that. You know you should have done your assignment this way. 
Sometimes, honestly, just to get that attention, students will do the wrong thing and make the teacher upset just to get that one-on-one -on -one attention. It's crazy, but it's true. So I'll, in our future behavioral class in a couple weeks, I'm gonna go over this more in depth, but I wanted you to understand what function means. Uh, real quick though, tangible is a very popular one right now because you know those phones and the tablets, students will engage in problem behavior just so they can get their phone back, just so they can get a tablet, if they can have more time to play with a game, you can also see problem behaviors coming out of that. So think of these are the three main ways. I will go more in depth on this later, but it helps if you see it early and then later when I talk about it, you're gonna have a, a better context. So ABC data is the other portion of a functional behavioral assessment that is incredibly important. So what is ABC data? I'm actually going to get right to this right here. Okay, antecedent behavior consequence. We're also gonna talk about this more in the behavior class, but I wanna give you a taste of it. Antecedent is what happens before the behavior, then this is what you're looking at with the behavior, and then there's a consequence. You, these can be in a string. They can, as you can see, let me follow my mouse. It can go like this, back down to this row, back down to this row. So first of all, it looks like this teacher is once again, just telling the student, get to work now. They're having a work compliance issue. They're causing disruptive behavior. So you, an observer can sit in the back. You can ask a co-teacher to come in or you can just kind of mentally log what's happening and then write it down after the occurrence. But someone's writing down and literally saying, okay, first thing that happens, teacher begins and tells the students to look at the board. The behavior, which is a behavior is anything that someone can actively do. If a dead man can do it, it's not a behavior because it has to be something action based, something that's being done. Okay, so the teacher begins, tells students to look at the board. The behavior is Ben looks around the room at the other kids. And then the consequence of that, the teacher continues the lesson and ignores Ben. So you can see maybe where this is heading out of the three functions. Will it be attention? Will it be escape? Or will it be tangible? So teacher continues the lesson and ignores Ben. Teacher puts examples on the board and asks class to work the problems. Okay. Then the behavior, Ben, which Ben is the, you know, the main star of all the behaviors because that's who we're watching. Ben looks around and calls to Fran. So he's saying, hey, Da, da, da. you know how they do side conversations in the classroom. The teacher says, I need everyone to be quiet. That's the consequence of Ben's action. Then the teacher tells the class to do five more problems. In response to that teacher's mandate, Ben turns around and pokes Fran with a pencil. So he's constantly bugging her. Teacher tells Ben, get to work now. And then at that point, Ben calls out and says, this is too hard. He throws his worksheet and book on the floor. The teacher demands that Ben come forward, get a hall pass and go to the office. So in this case, what would you say that this is? Do you think this is a attention function? Are they trying to get attention? Are they trying to escape something that they don't like? Or are they trying to get access to a tangible? So think a second about what that might be. So if you haven't thought of it already, you can pause me, of course, and then we'll, I'll let you know what I think. Looking at this, because attention and escape can look very similar if we're not careful. So you can tell that the student is poking another student. And the consequence every time is that the teacher is giving some form of attention. So did that form of attention stop the student from continuing? Because if that fulfilled their need, then they're probably gonna stop for a few minutes before they continue. That's when you know that's gotta be attention. In this case, it doesn't stop even when she gives attention to Ben every single time. And 
right before the behavior, what is she telling them to do? Look at the board, work this problem, work this problem. As soon as she says, work this problem, what is the behavior that happens? He starts engaging in problem behavior. When does the cycle stop? When do you say, okay, it's, it seems to be over. She kicks him out of her classroom. So you know that the behavior ended for that time when he had to leave. He did not want, every time he engaged in problem behaviors, when she said work, 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 he threw his worksheet on the floor and he was made to leave. I would say personally, this is an escape maintained behavior. So this just is just a concept to think about. So now that you under, see more of those definitions, it'll be easier to understand what an FBA does. You're trying to figure out why is a behavior occurring? And that's what an FBA is a tool to help you figure that out. So on this sheet, they pretty much summarize the antecedent behavior consequence up here, and they just took their data on the sheet. So what's happening here? Antecedent, right before the problem behavior, the difficult math task is given, asked to do a math problem on the board. Then the behavior is that they're ignoring, doodling, talking, refusing to work, and they're out of their seat. And the consequence is that they escape working on math because they're too busy doing everything else. Right here, you can see where it says perceived function. These are the categories. Do you think it's attention related, escape related, tangible related? And then it goes into detail of each one. And that's where they mark it. I'm, it is incredible. You could, you could try this at home on your roommate. Well, I don't know if they'll love that, but you can. You can try it on your pet. I have done this on my cat. I own a cat, I've said this before multiple times, where he engages in problem behavior. So I literally take notes of what happens before the behavior, what is the behavior, and then what is the consequence or what happens after the behavior. And I take like the other sheets, let's see, right here. You take a couple rows of that as you watch the whole scenario play out and you can start to see a pattern. What is the common theme with the antecedent? What's happening before the behavior? And you'll start to be able to determine if it's escape, attention, or um, tangible. So I know that's a lot. And honestly, at this point, I just want you to soak in the initial portion of it because I'm gonna go more in depth later, but it helps to have seen it and experienced it once before we go on to the deeper level. So the, the main thing you need to know right now is what does an FBA do? And do you know what antecedent behavior consequence is before the behavior, observe, before, observe, during, observe, after? You look for patterns and you determine the cause of the behavior. That's basically the whole premise of what an FBA does. And you can take data just like we talked about in our last session. Take baseline data. Once you determine how many minutes, let's see, frequency of disruptions, how many times do they make a disruption in the class? Then after you make the FBA is the time where you take an intervention and it's called a behavior intervention plan or a BIP. So I'm gonna say that again, behavior intervention plan or a BIP. Uh, this is mandated for students with emotional behavior disorders and it also can be created for students with just you know problem behaviors that are occurring once you put that behavior intervention plan in place which is the bip is an intervention like this line you start to see if the behavior changes so that's that's the whole point of an fba uh, due to time i'm not if we had longer classes like normal where it's two and a half to three hours long I would be able to do a lot more, but I just need to give you the basics for right now. I just want you to realize, I put this last slide here, that the steps for an FBA and the whole concept of understanding function, taking ABC data, which is actually part of an FBA, finding an intervention that fits the function, determine a reinforcer, collect data, We'll talk about this in a later class, but I want you to know that what I just talked about is going to be the pivotal foundation for behavior management in every class. 
general education, special education, K through 12. So just keep this in mind. Like I said before, the main thing you need to know, especially for your reading guide, is do you know what an FBA is? Do you know what antecedent behavior consequence? Why do we take ABC data? And why do we even have to determine the function of the behavior? So think about the example of the student with the math throwing the desk. Why is it important that we don't keep throwing that student out of our class when that's actually what they're wanting? They, they want to be thrown out of class. <laughs> so if we do that as teachers, we're going to save ourselves a lot of time and stress. So that's, that's it for now. I'm sure you might have extra questions or clarification points you want me to make. If so, let me know. I'd be happy to go over this more with you. But like I said, we're going to go over this more in depth. Just know what an FBA does and why we take it and how we do it. All right. Have a great week and I'll put your assignment help video up as well.